Early in the morning. Early in the morning. In the morning. What's going on, the people? They miss your boy, Cam Topical Juice, and we are back with another episode of Love Island. It is Monday morning. I'm getting this video done ASAP. It was pretty boring last night, wasn't it? Because I watched half of it last night and I watched the rest of it this morning so I can get it done. And I haven't really got that many notes. So I feel like this episode might be quite short where it wasn't really much to talk about. But either way, let's get straight into this video, man. Let's get this video out for y'all. Bring the energy. It's the morning. I feel like I deliver better videos in the morning because I'm a bit higher energy rather than late at night when I've got to be quiet and I'm tired and this and the other. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's get straight into this video, man. Like the video for me. Hit the bell to be notified for me. Please press that subscribe button for me. It's road to 50k. You done know the done know. Merchandise in the description. All of that, all of that. Yeah. Please press that subscribe button. Takes two seconds. Makes a massive difference. And you can always unsubscribe later down the line if you want to anyway. Let's get straight into this. So, the episode starts with the post Callum confession, the 16 bodies confession, right? And someone asks Callum, how would you feel if the shoe was on the other foot? And he actually says, listen, what can I say? What can I do? We weren't together. If she did, if she was moving like that, so be it. I've got no leg to stand on. He's absolutely spot on. What can he say? Like, he's right. Whether he, whether he believes what he's saying or not, I don't know. But that was the, that was the right answer. What can you do? And whoever asked that question, that's a great question, by the way. I think it was, it may have been Toby or Josh, one of them, man. It was one of them that said, how would you feel if, if the shoe was on our foot? And that's a great way. Us men need that question. Because a lot of men, they're never like, oh, yeah, it's okay for me to sleep with 50 girls, 100 girls. But if my girl did that, oh, no, 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 no. So we always need to know, we always need to imagine if the shoe was on our foot, how would it make us feel? On the other hand, Molly said she slept with one person in that time. One. She even said she can count on one hand how many people she slept with in her life. That is insane. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't care what a girl's body count is. I don't care. Like, I'm secure. And at the end of the day, I've got history. How can I talk about a girl's body count? How can I hold her to a specific standard when I can't hold that standard? I've never met a girl in my life that's got more bodies under their belt than me in it. Do you know what I'm saying? So I can't, I can't, I can't be a hypocrite. But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna lie, less than five bodies, that's a dream, innit? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, the reality is, I wouldn't even ask. I mean, I, I did a video on this anyway. Someone even commented, some new play commented on my video yesterday, oh, sorry, Saturday, and was like, oh, Saturn, Saturn, just make sure you keep the same energy if it, was, um, if it was the girls or something like that. Not knowing that my first ever video on YouTube, ever, ever, the first video I ever uploaded on YouTube was, does a man care about a girl's body count? And I'm sure I said in that video, this is five years ago now, but I said, I'm sure I said in that video, while men care, they shouldn't, and I don't. You know what I'm saying? So I've been, I've been real. The episode moves on to Arabella speaking about Anton, and she thinks that Anton was a cop out. And I agree, I agree, because Anton chose her for the most disloyal or game player, one of those two. And I agree, I think that was a cop out. But then she starts, she st she starts harping on about Chris, and uh, you know, I think he's fake, or how Chris had the opportunity to say how he really felt, but didn't say it and all this stuff and at the end of the day anaerobics you've literally recently had beef with chris you've literally just had beef with him so naturally he's going to pick you in the game it's not that deep it's not that deep antibiotics so it's, it's all good the episode moves on to georgia and tom and i'm not going to lie to you guys yeah georgia one she's fake yeah she's faker than flipping hannah's body and that but not only that yeah she is quite pathetic actually and what i mean by pathetic is the way she's actually begging and pining after Tom. Tom doesn't do anything, guys. And this is what I rate about Tom. He knows when he's got someone. He knows, he, he's, he's sharp enough and he's experienced enough with the female species, yeah, to know when he has got someone. So with G, he just sits there, doesn't do anything, so does Tom, barely says any combo, just sits there and smiles, maybe looks in her eyes a little piece, and she is soaking. Absolutely soaking. She's pining for him. She's, she, they, they start playing truth or dare, yeah? And she's asked him like five times in a day now. She asked him, Tom, do you fancy me? And I'm like, what? Like, what? Have some shame. Why do you keep asking if he fancy? Like, it's, it's just coming across as really desperate. It reeks of desperation, isn't it? Tom then asks her if she'd rather be with Callum or him. He's asking questions he knows the answers to. It's just all part of his game. He just wants to hear what he knows is true. He wants to hear it from the horse's mouth. And she's basically just giving him all she wants. Like, honestly, G, G is full of shit. Cause some of the, and I'm gonna give her a donut of the day today, actually. I'll get into why a bit later. But yeah, she, she, she's a proper, proper donut for, for her behavior today. And, and I just don't think Callum deserves to be kind of played around with and whatnot. But we'll get into that, man. Everything she was saying to Tom, she'd said to Toby. Molly and Callum speak and yeah, I don't really understand what's going on with them. It, 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 the, the thing is, the reality is, yeah, I think them two need to go back together. Because Callum ain't gonna have no luck with Georgia. Uh, Ju yeah, G G Georgia H, Georgia Steel. 
Molly, I think Molly, I think Molly will have some luck with Tom, but who knows? I think it's difficult. Does Tom, would Tom prefer G or would prefer, it, it does sound like he prefers Molly if I'm being honest. But I just, I have a feeling that G could sabotage in a way, I'm not too sure, because she is quite conniving like that. But I do think he wants to get to know Molly. We'll see. I don't know, we'll see. Molly and Callum speak and she basically says that friendship's off the cards in it, you know, we can't, we can't be friends. I don't think she meant that quite, he took it as that, oh sorry, I apologise for wanting to be friends. I understand from his point of view, but I think from her point of view, she's thinking, what's the point? We, we were in a relationship for three years, it was romantic. We can't just be friends. It's not like I'm gonna be friends with you and then talk about your dates and your sex life and all this stuff. It's not really gonna run, is it? So we're either together or we're not. But basically, she just tells Callum that she thinks that Callum should have been more considerate with, with dropping the 16 bodies. You can't really win with Molly. She's quite, she's, she's like a real diva, but at the same time, I also understand. Even though he did nothing wrong being honest, he was honest, which is great. Callum, you get brownie points, well done for being honest. I understand where she's coming from again because he, he did seem kind of proud to, to, to share that info. He, he did seem kind of chomping at the bit to to spread that news, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, asking for more brutal questions, asking for harder questions, yeah? He knew there was a possibility of getting a question like that. You know, he, he answered it honestly, but I think he could have he could have softened the blow a little bit. He could have said, listen, I'm gonna answer the question, because I'm honest, but I just wanna give context and say that this is not to hurt Molly at all. I was single, I was, you know, I was trying to get over you in any way possible, I even went traveling, so it's, it's quite a lot of girls. The, the number is 16. You know what I'm saying? He could have just <clears throat> softened it a little piece, so I, I get that. But at the end of the day, he told you the answer, it is what it is. Callum and G get the hideaway, and I was just thinking, Jesus Christ. You can see Tom smiling there, thinking, wow, that's peak. We just had a conversation like that, and you get the hideaway right around. This is where G gets thrown out of the day, because she is a liar and an actress. Get the fuck out of here, yeah? She talks to Callum, yes, and she says, again, the exact same words. It's like she doesn't, she, it's like th these islanders, they are all so low IQ. They, these lot have been in their own series of Love Island, they've been in Love Island games, they've been in All Star, they've been this, they do this, they do that, they do this, they do that. They know how it works. They, it's like they forget they're being watched in 4K from 400 different angles. This goof, yeah, she literally said, she says, oh, Cal, I wouldn't want to be here with anyone else. You were just saying to Tom how you've got, oh, you make me wet and you've got, I've got chemistry with you and I can, she even said at the end of the episode, she can't see herself sleeping with Callum. That's not something that you learn. That's not something that you have and then it disappears or that you don't have and it comes. That you, you have that from the start with someone. When you look at someone, you think, boy, I'm trying to slap that in dogs. You know, anyone's there, that's how man them think. And I know a lot of girls, multiple girls have told me this year, how they know that they fancy a man is if they can see themselves blowing him off. You know them ones there, <laughs> you get me? So that's how human mind works. Don't just think men think the same thing, women think the same thing as well. They look at a man and think, rah, I would, I want him to stretch me out. You know them ones there, girls are, girls are nasty with it, man. Trust me, take my word for it, girl. <laughs> She's talking all this grease to, to Tom and then she just lies to Callum's face saying, I wouldn't want to be here with anyone else. I feel like we're getting closer. I feel like this, I feel like that. Why are you saying this? And they, and they, women say to us, women say that men speak unprovoked. Women tell us that men lie unprovoked. It's true, men do lie unprovoked. But people need to realize, we need to stop, uh, we need to stop doing men versus women. Black versus white, Asian versus whatever, like, who cares? Everyone is the same. Everyone is trash. Everyone lies. Do you understand? Comprende. Lo entiendes. Yeah? You understand me? Everyone's trash. So G, she's equally as trash, lying unprovoked to Callum's face. Say, yeah, I wouldn't want to be here with no one else. Fam, yes, you, as in, there's more people in the villa that you'd rather be in the hideout with, let alone the world. <laughs> Do you understand? The next morning comes around and Chris asks if Molly and Tom lipsed in bed because they were kissing last night. Because and, and Chris is a perv, to be honest. G pulls Tom to the terrace the next morning again. She pulls him to the terrace like on a, on a sliding, on a hidden thing. Why? She just says, oh, there's, there's like so much tension between us. I just don't know what to do, rah, rah. And even, do you see what my man did? I don't know if you lot clocked it. Please tell me you clocked it. I need to watch, I need to watch all my favorite content creators um, reviews in a minute after I um, record this. But I just want to see who clocked it. Did you not see when they were talking on the terrace here? Yeah? Did you see Tom go like this? Can you see my hand? He goes, he's sitting there. G's there and he goes. Just like that, he's just sitting there. He didn't say a word. I do this sign as well. Do you know what, what, who I do this sign to? I do this sign to my dog, yeah? I, t I touch the sofa for my dog to come jump on me and chill, give me cuddles, yeah? That's a command for a dog. Hey boy, hey boy. My man Tom taps the sofa, doesn't even say anything. But in his mind he's saying, here girl, come, come girl. Come girl, let me feed. <laughs> come, come, come here. <laughs> and she just, non-verbally, non he just went, 
and she just came rolling over. And then they had the moment where they almost looked at each other like they were about to kiss, and then they didn't. And then they're doing all that, oh, you know, your trouble, you are, you know, all this chemistry, all this little, yeah. and it's, that's all it is. It's sexual chemistry, that's all it is. Have you not learned from Chris and Arabella? This is a prime example. Chris and Arabella, that was pure sexual, and now they hate each other, so. Ah, gee, she's so desperate, like she even said, because Tom said, oh yeah, me and Molly had a kiss last night. And gee, she's like such a, she's so self-absorbed, or she thinks that, or she thinks that just because she's got chemistry with someone, all their behaviours are based on what she does. So she actually had the audacity to say to Tom's face, ah, oh, did you kiss Molly because you knew I was in the hideout with Cal? What? No, not everything's about you, mate. <laughs> like, what? Liberty, I'm not even going to talk about this, Liberty finally, Liberty says that she's finally going to move on. Like, Mitch, fam, Mitch dumped you about 10 years ago. Why are you still talking about Mitch and move on, innit? So, so Mitch, Liberty moves on to these next man. Callum and Anton speaking. I, I, I wasn't really paying attention to this scene last night. So I kind of missed what happened, but I think Cal's starting to think that it's a bit booky, I think. I think Cal has got a problem with either Tom or G or the whole love triangle. I, I didn't really hear it though. Molly has a speech and she shades Callum. She says, yeah, here, 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 here's to the 16 of us or something like that. Get over it. Georgia H says that she wants Mitch but wants to let the stuff settle with Liberty and Anton and fam I'm so glad the girl said this and it was Kaz that said it the most but it started with Hannah. Hannah tried to say something and I think the girls were all in agreement and then Georgia H was like yeah like tell me straight tell me straight and then Kaz said listen I think what the girls are trying to say and I agree is that it's like you're going from a man to a boy. How can you go from Anton? How can you not see what you see in Mitch in Anton, but you see it in Mitch. Fam, how does that make any sense, bro? Mitch, messy Mitch. The guy who will say, the guy has the same B-Tech bars every time. Guys, have you not clocked it? Any girl that he speaks to, Georgia H, Arabella, Liberty, Demi, he, he has this way where he's like, ah, oh, he, I'll give you an example of what he says. If anyone else were to come in the villa, it's pointless, you're mine now. I like you, I got you, you're mine now. If anyone else were to come in the villa, won't matter, you man. <laughs> and all this, all, this, all this stuff, like, he'll just, he'll do that kind of confident, intentional game. You know when, like, women, again, women love intention. They love when a man demonstrates and showcases intention. What do you, what, what are you doing with me? What are you trying to achieve with me? Intention is very attractive for a woman. He'll show intention to that girl, and then fuck her over and be messy. He'll then show intention to Liberty, then fuck around and be messy. He'll then show intention to Georgia, and that same shit bars, like the shit lyrics, the shit game, it's, it's, you can see through it. He is Casper the Ghost, broski. So he was doing the same thing to Georgia A, just shitting, spitting shit bars. Tyler and Hannah go on a date. I'm disappointed that Cass started to cry. I understand she's only human. I understand it's, it's natural to, when you see your ex and that's your last ex, I understand it's natural to be upset. I just think two years, the guy didn't even like you at, back then. He doesn't like you now. It's been that long. He hasn't really made any effort, like. Come on, Cass. But at the end of the day, the good thing about Kaz, yeah, you, you lot know me, you lot, not, not, not you new plates, you lot OG TJ watchers, you lot, you lot know I don't do the crying thing, man. But, it's just, when Kaz cries, there's something, so, there's, there's, there's so much more decorum about it. She doesn't run off, she doesn't throw a fit, she doesn't, oh, I just need a minute, oh, and, oh, she just, it, all it is is one tear, one lapse of emotion, wipes it and keeps it moving. That's what I respect about Kaz. She's human, so she cries, but she cries with dignity, you know what I'm saying? But hopefully, the, the next level up was, will be she doesn't cry at all, you know what I'm saying? Because why are you crying over Tyler at the end of the day, boy? Tyler and Hannah go on this date and she's, yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking lovely, baby. Great dates, baby. Slow bear, a baby. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. That was pretty much the highlights of the date. Yeah, Kaz and Toby speak. Sorry, Kaz was crying. Toby was there to comfort her. He didn't really comfort her much. He just said, yeah, you're all right and whatever. Tom and Chris speak and Tom exposes G to Chris. I've written down here big dick energy. I think that was about Hannah. Again, it's so far. I don't know why it makes me laugh when she says that. Big dick energy. You have fucking big dick energy. You came in, you went, you beeline straight for me. Came with a big dick, huge dick energy. Yeah, fucking great. I don't even think he came in with BD energy, to be fair. I think he just, he was the first person in, in, in the villa this season to actually kind of make a half move on her, innit? So, one of them ones there still. But, yeah. So, we'll see, man. We'll see. I think G ends the episode by talking about how she hasn't, she, she can't see herself sleeping with Cal. And... Sophie rightly says, that's your answer then. I think you need to tell Cal, like, well, what are you doing here? And I, I can't wait, it sounds harsh, but I can't wait for Georgia to pursue something like Tom and it fall through. Because there's a reason why the her, that like, she's, obviously she's still quite young. I think she's, she still acts on lust rather than what's right for her. So 
Yeah. Evil, let me know your thoughts, man. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you lot tomorrow. Or tonight. Peace.